Good morning, everyone. This is Song Zhu Zhu from California ISO. I'm going to share with you uh, California ISO experience with uh, EMT modeling of inverter-based resources. First, some background. You know, uh, California ISO is at the front line of the uh, inverter-based in resource development. Uh, in the past uh, about 10 years, we have already seen a shift in resource mix in our control grid. Uh, actually, as of June 1st, 2021, uh, there are already 14 gigawatt solar and about 7 gigawatt wind and 2.5 gigawatt uh, battery installed in our grid. Our peak solar production has reached uh, 13 gigawatt and the peak wind production was 5.7 gigawatt, and we have uh, reached instantaneous renewable penetration of 94.5%. So as we momentarily, we have uh, been very close to 100% of IBR. And remember our peak load is about is only about 50 gigawatt, and looking into the future, our generation interconnection queue has, uh, right now has 246 gigawatt, that is about five times of our peak load. And also among those 246 gigawatt gen new generation interconnection requests, dominantly they are inverter-based generators. So we need to be prepared for a, a very, very high, extremely high IBR grade in the future, especially with S no, with the SB100, um, uh, the, the state law, uh, we do expect to see even faster growing of the IBR resources in the coming years. So for the California ISO uh, EMT study, because more and more important, we must incorporate EMT studies into planning to ensure continued reliability. So we are contemplating EMT study that will be focusing on subsynchronous oscillation, and that is the, the uh, SSCI between the inverter-based resources and the just compensated uh, transmission, uh, no, the series, actually the, the series effect on the transmission line. And also we're, we're looking for control interaction among uh, different IBR plants, and uh, also uh, as, as more uh, IBR replaces the uh, synchronous generators, uh, we do anticipate our grid will become weaker and weaker. So weak grid analysis will be uh, imp very critical for us. However, all these uh, studies, uh, they have to be uh, established uh, on top of valid models. If we don't have good models, then the study is kind of meaningless. And uh, basically, uh, no, it doesn't really represent the actual system. So at this time, you know, given the amount of the IBR in our, uh, our grade, uh, collecting the EMT models is uh, not a, a trivial uh, task to complete, to, to accomplish. So right now that ISO has put a lot of effort on collecting good EMT models. But uh, here uh, I want to show you our process. So the EMT model, uh, for, uh, at least for ISO, we don't really uh, uh, collect the model at the very beginning of an interconnection request. Uh, the reason for that is you know, most of the interconnection requests uh, will not you know, come to the finish line. Uh, also, you know, at the early stage of interconnection request, actually they haven't decided on the inverters and the uh, manufacturer yet. So those are quite uh, speculating at the beginning and throughout the interconnection in the process, um, pretty much every project will change their inverters several times. So that's why we don't collect EMT model upfront at the very beginning of the interconnection process. So here you see our interconnection process. 
uh, for, uh, the, the, the major steps are interconnection request, then the interconnection studies, then executing interconnection agreement, and then the, and the resources go into the uh, new resource implementation phase and uh, synchronize and uh, commercial operation. So during the interconnection request phase, we only require RMS model and we will perform an initial validation, make sure the RMS model are good enough for the, for the study and they meet all the interconnection requirements and the uh, applicable reliability standards. Then during the interconnection study process, we will perform stability analysis using the RMS model. Also, toward the end of the interconnection study process, we do a SSCI screening. So it is um, uh, it is uh, based on the proximity of the IBR to a first compensated transmission line and based on impedance scan. And if the SSCI risk is identified, then we would require EMT model and perform SSCI study before the generator can synchronize to the grid. If the, uh, if the screening doesn't identify the risk, and then we would require the EMT model 120 days after COD, after commercial operation. So the purpose is at that time, we can get very good as built model that reflects what's actually installed and uh, um, set up in the field. And then, that is post COD. Actually, that that's when the uh, very thorough validation process starts. Now, of course, during this entire process, uh, the, the owner will make multiple change. Um, they change. They could change everything from inverter to to all the interconnection facilities, and maybe not just one time, many times. So every time when they make a modification, if the modification is approved, the models must be updated and validated again. Uh, actually, the modification is not just during the interconnection process, it could also happen post the commercial operation. We do allow post um, uh, operation mod modification as long as it's non-material, but that will require update of the model and we will revalidate all the models. So regarding the EMT model submission, we have our criteria that is uh, for the uh, for the IBR, the inverter based uh, resources, EMT models are required if the facility inter uh, connects to 60 kV uh, or above, and it has um, uh, aggregate uh, single risk individual resource capacity grant greater than 10 MVA or aggregate resource nameplate greater than 20 MVA. Um, so that's the majority of the IBRs would meet this requirement and they must provide uh, EMT models. Only the IBRs in the uh, kind of more like in the uh, distribution system that is lower than 60 kV, so it could also be a sub-transmission system and, and all it's, it's very small and it's, very, it's small then they don't need to provide. So with that, we do require, like, currently we are trying to collecting around 100 EMT models from those generators. And the timeline already uh, kind of covered. Uh, so we run the SSCI screening uh, at the end of interconnection study phase. Uh, if there's no risk, of, uh, no SSCI risk, the model is required 120 days after the COD. If there is a risk, you know, the model is required before it can synchronize. And then whenever there's a modification, um, models are required to be updated. Also, we have a periodic update of all the models every 10 years. So EMT model, we have an EMT model requirement posted on the California ISO website. The requirement is quite similar to uh, to the requirements uh, used by uh, other utilities. Um, so the requirements are uh, put into four categories. First is the documentation requirement, uh, because the, all those EMT models are black box. We do need uh, 
good documentation uh, so we know how to run it. Uh, and also, uh, more important, we know what uh, parameters, what control and uh, protection are configurable and how to change them. Then the model usability requirement is about, you know, we, we can really use the model. So we have a requirement regarding simulation time step and uh, how, how long it takes to initialize the model. Uh, and then also we want the model um, to be configurable so we can change the settings, so we can scale up down the capacity and dispatch the output of the generators. Also, we, we could disable perfections for debugging purpose. There are also efficiency features like, uh, like uh, uh, it should support snapshot uh, and it should be, we should be able to copy uh, into the same case and uh, we can also copy it into a different case. The model accuracy requirement. Uh, we, we require the model is submitted for everything in the plant from the inverters all the way to the point of interconnection on the grid. So all the devices should be modeled and should match what, uh, what is installed in the field. And then we all, we, all the inverters, uh, it should, the model should include all the controls and the protections, both on the AC side and DC side. And then also the, the controls, uh, all the uh, plant level controls should also be modeled. Um, and all the controls protections should accurately reflect field settings. Then it comes to the model performance requirement. Uh, the performance requirement uh, uh, is, is to check the performance against uh, interconnection requirements and applicable reliability standards. So typically those requirements include what wire control um, performance requirement, frequency wire control requirement like uh, the FERC order uh, 842 and rise through uh, for rise through requirement. Those requirements are typically in, specified in the generation interconnection agreement. They are also based on various uh, uh, reliability standards and FERC orders. And we also require that we the, the performance must be acceptable at a, a, a short cycle ratio of three. So this is based on the uh, uh, forecast of short cycle, uh, short ratio in our system. So right now the California ISO, uh, we have a, we still have a decent uh, SDR, uh, but as more and more IVRs replacing the same for generators, we have observed that SDR would get uh, down and almost to uh, three. So that's why we require SDR uh, at three for the model validation. We collect all the data, then the, the very important thing for the ISO to perform is to benchmark and validate the models. So we'll, the test reports per NERC uh, stand, uh, standards, um, those reports will be provided uh, 12 months after the commercial operation of the generators. Uh, our model requirement is 120 days after the commercial operation. So in the, for, a period, for, a, for some time, we do have the models, but we don't have the test reports. So, uh, so before we have the test reports, we will benchmark between the IMS model and the EMT model. Then when, when the generation owner submit the test report to us, to us, then we will benchmark both the EM, IMS model and the EMT model against the field test. So how, how do we in, in, um, benchmark and validate the RMS model and the EMS model? So we run similar tests with both RMS model and the EMS model. So the setup are pretty, uh, 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 almost uh, very close in, in both tests. We said uh, we set a uh, voltage source at a point of interconnection uh, with uh, SDR uh, equals to three. Then we run bump test 
uh, bump test is a three phase ground fault at a point of interconnection, then typically cleared in four cycles. Uh, it is, uh, it's adjustable based on the interconnecting voltage level. Then we do voltage reference step up and down test to, to verify the uh, small disturbance water bar control. And we run frequency reference step up and down test to verify primary frequency response. And uh, or then the voltage rise through test. Uh, voltage rise through test is actually a playback of the a certain voltage profile uh, at the POI, and then uh, observe whether the inverters can rise through that or not. So the same tests are performed on, for both IMS and the EMS uh, EMT model. The IMS and the EMT benchmarking. Um, Typically, you know, because for ISO, we require generic RMS model. So the generic RMS model uh, doesn't usually does not match uh, EMT model that well. Uh, and we can see that voltage and active power usually track pretty well between the two. Um, still, sometimes they, they can be different. Uh, mostly, the active power could be different. The reactive power response is usually are quite different between the two. That's because the generic model is uh, it's kind of simplified, try to represent different OEM um, products. Uh, so it doesn't model every single details of a particular uh, inverter. And the, uh, the EMT model has a lot, a lot more details included. So here are some examples of the benchmarking between IMS and the EMT model. Uh, in the, the, the top row is one example, and the, the bottom one is another example. You can see actually the voltage uh, pretty close between the two. And then if you look at the middle one, that's the reactive power, uh, actually, um, in, the, in those examples, they are, they are not too different. So the, the second one is kind of the, the initial condition and not uh, adjust the exact same. So that it's just a little bit off, but the shape are quite similar. Then the, the last uh, column, that's the real power. You can see for the first one, for the top one, they match very well. But the, the second one is, uh, they are different. Uh, we, we got explanation from the OEM that is because the, the actual ramp rate uh, for the inverters, it's a variable ramp rate. It's not always just one ramp rate under all conditions. Um, but in the generic model, we can only model one ramp rate. So generally speaking, the generic IMS model is applicable when SCR is above three, and then it, it, it may still work well for SCR between two and the three, but then generally IMS model uh, should not be used uh, to evaluate uh, performance if SCR is below two. While the EMT model expected to work you know, with SCR very close to one, but that's not always the Case. We have seen that some EMT models doesn't work uh, at SDR equal to three. So it, it could be just the model problem. The model isn't accurate. It's not good. Um, but it could also be an indication that the plant actually has a weak grade performance issue and should be fixed. So on the right, you see that's an example. We have this at SDR equals to three, you can see that the model isn't stable. So when this happens, it needs a lot of debug to, to check whether it is a, just a modeling issue or it is a real issue. And this typically involves help from the OEM since the model is black box. So we, our plan is to you know, perform some EMT area study once we have good models. So the, the, the EMT area study we are, we are going to perform include one is, the, is to, to 
uh, to analyze control interactions, uh, especially when IBR plants are close to serious compensate transmission line. So for the ISO system, actually, we do have a lot of IBR collectors. Those are huge collectors. On one substation could interconnect uh, several thousand megawatt uh, solar and wind generators. Then take that to the to the 500 kV line, and typically those 500 kV lines are serious compensated. So um, uh, we are very interested to know when we would see some uh, SSCI and uh, between the IBR plants and the serious collapse, and also if, uh, with the very large amount at single point of interconnection, we want to check. Oh, that we are going to have some control interactions. So then basically some os oscillation between different plants since they are you know, different owners, they are uh, set up differently, tuned differently. When you put them together, they could oscillate against each other. And then also uh, the, uh, another focus area is to uh, reduce the system structural strength and verify uh, if we have a great um, control problem. So right now our work is in progress. We have analyzed the short circuit strength at different locations in the uh, in the system. Then we selected the most critical locations for I for the EMT studies. Then next step is to develop local area uh PISCAP study cases. Uh, for the, one for each selected uh, location and perform SSCI study. So that we, we're right now to achieve this, we must have the the EMT models, and that's the the, the current focus. Uh, and for us, one collector, you know, have, it, it has several thousand you know, IBR connected connecting to it, and there are like a ten to twenty different plants. So collecting just for one location in order to perform study, we need models from all those 10 to 20 generator owners. And we need to validate them, make sure they are good enough to perform the study. And so once we have the models, we can run local area study, then the final step will be uh, to expand the local area. To, so we start with one substation, then we will expand the local area to include the nearby substations and then perform uh, SSCI study. Thank you. Uh, if you have questions, you can contact me. Uh, uh, my email address is shu at, at caiso.com. Thank you.